and then I just walked around here in the room we can see we even like measured the, um, the roof here so here we can just like move around we can see the table the chair the computers we can see some other tables over here the TV um, the couch over here to the left and so on we even get really nice details here at the pillows um, on the couch we can see like the details in the TV here we can see we get this nice rectangular shape Hey guys, welcome to a new video on this point clouds and open for tutorial. In this video here, I'm going to show you how we can create point clouds with an iPhone or iPad by utilizing the LiDAR uh, built into that. So we're going to use an app called Polycam where we can actually like, use the iPads, both the camera and also the LiDAR scanner. So we can go around in the environment, uh, do like uh, capturing 3D information with the LiDAR of different kind of objects or like whole environments. So I'm going to walk around in this room here, uh, in this video here, create a point cloud of the whole environment or the whole living room here. And then we're going to load it into Open3D, do all different kind of operations as we've done on the previous point clouds, where we have just used examples provided by Open3D. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, travels about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel for a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you have some challenges or problems in your own pro uh, projects, I can also help you out and give you some guidance if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all, here we're going to see how we can actually like, use this Polycam uh, app. So here I just went into the app. I created a new project and now I actually like, just use the lighter uh, and a camera to capture all the information about the environment that we have. So we see we have these kind of like blue areas. So these are the areas where the, where the lighter hasn't returned any values for yet. So you could either like wait for that to capture the values uh, and so on. You can see over here in the window, it is not reflecting the lighter or like the laser coming out of the lighter. So we can't get any in-depth information in the window, for example, because it doesn't reflect the light and we don't know the distance um, to that um, object. But we see all the other different kind of objects here in the scene. Uh, we get all the 3D information, then we are just moving the camera around. And then later on, we will actually like process it where we can see like all these different kind of views together with the LiDAR scanner. We get information about all the objects and our whole environment here. And then we're going to post process it. So we're going to combine all of it together from the different kind of like camera and laser angles. And then we can actually like create a point cloud that we can load into Open4D. So here we can see we're just mapping the whole environment. We're trying to get rid of as many blue um, areas here as possible because we just want to get all the information here and we actually get really nice details and exact depth to all the different kind of objects in our environment. So here we can see that we're almost done capturing um, our environment here or like taking um, a map or like creating a map here of the environment. Now when we're done, we can actually just go in here. We get a short preview, preview over our point cloud. We can see all these different kind of like green points here in the middle. It is all the camera angles and all the lighter angles um, or like all the angle views that we have when we were moving around in the environment. Then we can go down, process it for fast space object or custom. If you want to create like a point cloud that is good for the memory, uh, good for objects, or we just want to process it fast. If you have a really large point cloud, we can actually just move around in different kind of rooms, environments, and so on, and combine them all. Or you can just take individual objects, uh, make a 3D scan of that one, and then process it, um, ex export the files, and then we can actually load it into Open3D. So here we can just see is processing the information and the data here from all the different kind of um, sensor or camera views. And then we're actually just processing it. We can see that it takes an estimated time of, of about one minute to process this whole environment. Then when it's done processing, we can see the whole reconstructed environment here that we had by capturing all the information and data uh, from our cameras when we were moving around um, in the environment. Then we can play around with the point cloud here. We get all the points. We get all the, all the like the call information about the point that we had. We can zoom in, see all the details in our point cloud um, and so on. So we can see like, did we capture enough? We can see there are some bright spaces um, around here at the table and under the chair because I didn't, um, I didn't take any measurements or I didn't like um, take the camera and, and, and measure under the table, for example. So it doesn't know anything about those points. So I can actually go back, create a better point cloud um, by capturing those uh, like areas too. So we get a more complete point cloud of our whole environment. But this is pretty good for just demonstration. And then we're going to load this point cloud here into Open3D. But first of all here, we need to export our file. So you can either get the premium version here of Polycam where you can export all these different kind of files. We're going to use the PLY format here. We can see that you need a pro version for that one. But this video here, we're just going to go with the GLTF so you guys can use it as well. 
So we're just going to use export it at this GLTF uh, mesh file format, and then we can use an online converter to convert it to PLY, and then we can then use PRI to load it into OBD and do all the processing with. If you have the pro version here, or if you pay for it, uh, you, you should, I actually just recommend that because you will get better point clouds. You don't need to convert it back and forth between different kind of file formats. You can just go in here, take the point cloud uh, directly from the PLY format. You can also get the X, Y, Z format and all these different kind of like point cloud, cloud uh, data formats. So it's better to use that, but in this video here, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to go with TLTF, release some information and stuff like that. And then we're going to, uh, to convert it, load it into OpenBRD, and then we can play around with it. So this video here is actually just about not using the example from open 4 d but now we're creating our own point clouds and then we can use the exact same methods, algorithm to do different kind of processing techniques on our point clouds of our own environments. We can create individual objects, point clouds of individual objects, whole environments, different kind of rooms. You can even like map your whole house or apartment or something like that. And then you can get it into a 3D model, play around with it, walk around in your own room on your computer. So we're not jumping into the Jupyter Notebook here, where I'm just going to show you how we can actually like load in these point clouds, do some basic operations on them. We can see what is going on, play around with the point clouds just to see and get a feeling of uh, how it works. So first of all here, we're just going to import the different kind of OpenPD modules, NumPy and so on. If you want more details about processing techniques, what these different kind of techniques and algorithms uh, do on our point clouds, you should definitely check out the other videos throughout this tutorial about OpenPD and point clouds. We're going into details about everything. We're going to show examples and so on, both with example point clouds, but also with our own point clouds, play around with them, do different kind of algorithms and i'll explain line by line of the code and also what those algorithms do but this video here we're just generating our point cloud and then we're displaying it doing some some techniques on it like post processing techniques on it just to see uh, how we can do it so here we're just going to run this block of code so we actually just import these different kind of things that we need then we can go down and read in our point cloud so here i just have my uh, point cloud PLY format here. So I just used an online converter to go from the format from um, from our app to PLY format here. So we can basically just load in the file here, specify the path, and then it will store the point cloud in this variable PCD. Then we're going to print out the PCD and also um, the, the points inside our PCD. We can store different kind of information about the color, normals, and so on as well. And then we can just use visualization .draw geometries to actually like draw our point cloud that we loaded in. So now I'll just run this blob of code here and now we can just get up this interactive window where we get up the environment. We can see this is the, the door that I actually like started from generating the data or like measure the data from. And then I just walked around here in the room. We can see we even like measured the, um, the roof here. So here we can just like move around. We can see the table, the chair, the computers. We can see some other tables over here, the TV, um, the couch over here to the left and so on. We even get really nice details here at the pillows um, on the couch. We can see like the details in the TV here. We can see we get this nice rectangular shape and also in the chair, we get, we get all these nice uh, shapes in the chair. Again, we, need, we, we, we don't have the points here in between the chair and the table. We could make a better point cloud, um, of course, if we did measurements with our camera and our lighter scanner in that area too. But here again, we have a whole point cloud loaded into our computer directly from our phone or our iPad. Um, if you have that and with a LiDAR scanner, now we just went from like taking a whole environment, we have it inside our computer now. Now we can do post estimation of all of these different objects that we have. So we can actually just crop out like for example, the chair uh, here, and then we can just use that point cloud to do ICP, global registration and so on and do post estimation of it here in the environment. We can do segmentation, uh, plane segmentation, optic segmentation, and so on, and do all these different kind of um, uh, processing techniques and also algorithms that we can apply. We can even walk in here, just move around. It's really nice. You should, you should definitely try it out on your own if you have an iPhone uh, an iPad available with a LiDAR scanner. It is really nice to just like see your whole, uh, your whole room, your whole environment, different kind of optics, just play around with it, walk around in it, um, and so on. But this is just how to load in a point cloud. We can also go down voxel down sample our point cloud. We talked about that in previous videos, how that works. So it is basically just down sampling our point cloud. So we don't have that many points. And again, we don't lose that much information here in our point cloud, even though we're down sampling it. We still get some nice details over here in the pillows and so on. So basically here, we can also estimate normals. So we can estimate normals to all our points. 
because when we're creating our own point cloud, we don't have the potent the normals already estimated for the planes. So we should definitely do that to be able to do like, for example, scene reconstruction and also a lot of if other different kind of algorithms actually require that we have these surface normals, uh, normals to all the points in our point cloud. And now we can see when we have estimated the normals here, we just get all these um, all these lines here uh, that are actually like perpendicular to all the points in our point cloud when we're when we're looking at um, at a plane here for the different kind of points. So this is actually like really nice. We can see that all the floor here and also the roof, we just have all these perpendicular, um, all these perpendicular, perpendicular lines here to all the points because we actually like just have a plane at the roof and the floor and stuff like that. We get some more details here at the chair where we have some sharper edges um, and so on. Well, this was one of the examples. We can also go in and do surface reconstruction just to see how it works. We can actually like optimize and tune around the parameters to get a better model, do reconstruction of our whole environment if we want to do that. So here we're just going to import these different kind of modules and just try to do some surface reconstruction, see how it works. And then we can also uh, optimize it later on if you want a more detailed model. So in this video here, we're just going to go with alpha shapes as we talked about in the previous video. Again, we're just loading in a point cloud and visualize it, uh, visualize it here with the draw geometries. This is the exact same point cloud as we just had in the, in the, in the other example. Then we can go down here and then we can actually like do our, um, our geometry here where we're trying to um, reconstruct the surface by using this, uh, these alpha shapes uh, that we know of. We're just having an alpha value and then we can actually like just tune that parameter for uh, our accuracy in our point cloud when we're actually like doing reconstruction. So when you have a really large point cloud, it might take a bit longer time to actually like do these um, reconstruction algorithms. But here we can see with this alpha value here, we get some really nice details. We can see here at the monitor here at the computer, this is actually like really nice details. Also in the chair here, we get a really, really smooth surface here around the chair, really nice details. But just, again, we're just taking a phone, walking around in the environment, and then we're creating these really detailed reconstructed environments uh, by just loading in an open to be open 3D here, calling three different kind of lines of code. And then we get these nice point clouds that we can play around with it. Uh, and do different kind of operations. So here we can see that it is actually like the more like dense areas that we get these nice surface reconstruction um, for. So we can see here at the bottom, uh, we don't have like that many because we don't have that many points here at the floor. Then we can really reconstruct it because we don't have any information about like how can we actually like reconstruct those things because it all depends on this alpha value. But if you create a more like dense point cloud or you tune this alpha parameter, do Poisson uh, reconstruction instead. You can actually act like get more detailed uh, reconstruction here. Also again, play around with L value um, so you get a better reconstruction of your point cloud and the environment uh, that you capture with your sensors. So this is just to show you what we can do by generating these different kind of point clouds. We can do all different kind of operations. We can take like whole environment, like whole apartments, whole rooms, walk around in them, create whole maps of different kind of areas and so on. So it's actually like really cool, really useful for a lot of different kind of applications and really cool projects that we're going to look at uh, later on throughout this channel. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations camera calibration, stereo vision, how we can use stereo vision to get depth information in our image, how we can use stereo vision to actually like generate depth maps, our own, de our, our own depth maps, and then we can create point clouds from those depth maps. Because if you don't have a LiDAR scanner, if you don't have any laser scanners that can get depth information for us, we can actually use stereo vision to get some estimate of the depth in the image. We can also create some really nice point clouds by that, also use deep learning and so on. But if you're interested in that computer vision tutorial, I'll link to it up here. Or else I'll just see you next week, guys. Bye for now.